Hello friends, today we are going to see semi-join in distributed databases. So learning outcome for this session is students will be able to evaluate join query using semi-join strategy. So before moving to semi-join, let us understand how the jo uh, join operation is performed in distributed databases, uh, especially when the relations are at different sites. So look at this example here, we are having three sites A, B, C and the three relations are present or are available at site A, B and C. So account is at site A, depositor is at site B and branch is at site C. And now the query that is account join depositor join branch is issued at site A. So of course at site A only account relation is available. So we need to shift this branch and depositor to the account or account needs to be shifted. So there are multiple approaches to perform this join operation. So let us look at the uh, these approaches. So what is the first approach is that uh, uh, as I told you that uh, depositor and branch ship these two relations to site A and then perform the join operation locally at site A. Okay? So depositor and branch will be shipped then account and join and then result of temp and depositor. So any of the uh, sequence will be followed and the join operation will be performed. But what is the problem here is that if uh, indices are existing for this uh, relations like depositor and branch which will be helpful for join operation then we cannot use that index join. Okay? In that scenario again we have to create the indices for branch and depositor or we have to use some other join strategy which may be more expensive due to the non-availability of the indexes. So what is the second approach here is that ship a copy of account relation to site SB. So here account will be shifted to site SB then perform the join operation of account and depositor and save the result in temp relation or temporary relation. Now whatever the result that we have obtained needs to be shipped, uh, sent to again site C. Perform the join operation of temp1 and again branch and then store the result in again the some temporary relation for example here temp2 and then send back this temp2 to the site A. Now we can follow any of the uh, sequence or the role for example account will be shifted to site C from the result will be sent back to B and from B to A or whatever may be that B and C will be performed first or the depositor and branch will be taken. So any of the strategy or the role can be selected but what is the problem here is that when both the relations when we are taking the join operation so temporary relations may be potentially large relations if their data common data in between two relation is very uh, large or the number of tuples are more in that case that temporary relation will be large and shipping that relation from one side to other can require or may require here extra network transmission. Okay? So this is what the problem with this particular strategy is. So while join, uh, performing the join operations, we need to consider the, uh, these are factors like amount of data being shipped, cost of the transmitting a data block between sites and relative processing speed at each site. Okay? Because uh, any of the strategy that we are selecting from approach 1 or approach 2, in that scenario if the particular relation is small, then the amount of data being shipped is going to be very less. Even the cost of transmission is not much. In that case, we can ship the relation from one side to other. But if this is too large, then it will be more expensive. And hence, we are going for this semi-join strategy. So what is semi-join strategy is that instead of shipping the complete relation from one side to the other, we need to select the tuples which are contributing to that particular join operation. So as we can say this is the sign or the notation for semi-join. So semi-join of R1, R2 is nothing but projecting the records of uh, R1 that is the relation R1 and this R1 semi-join R2 selects those tuples of R1 that are contributed to the join of R1 and R2. Let us look at the example here or the steps first and an example. So R1 is a relation with schema of course capital R1 at site S1 whereas R2 is a relation stored at site S2. And now we want to evaluate the expression R1 join R2 and obtain the result at S1. So what is the first step is that instead of shipping the complete relation R1 what we are going to do is that first find out the common attributes which are uh, required for join operation in R1 and R2 and project only that attributes from R1 and store it in temp1. 
okay so after getting the common attributes data ship that temp1 from site s1 to s2 at s2 whichever the attributes common attributes that we have transferred we have to take the join operation of this temp1 with entire relation r2 and store the result in temp2 so again this temp2 will be shipped from s2 to s1 instead of complete r2 relation and then the join of r1 and temp2 will be performed at site s1 now if assume that if r1 r2 has been initiated at site s2 then the flow will be little bit different different means that again first will be common attributes that we are going to select but we are going to project the data from r2 that will be shipped again to site s1 at s1 the temporary relation and r1 will perform the join operation again temp2 will be sent from s1 to s2 and actual join operation of temp2 and r2 will be performed at s1 so where has this particular query has been initiated accordingly the sequence will change now these are the two relations one is the event relation and the other one is venue relation with this uh, schema of event id title date and venue id whereas venue has venue id name manager address capacity so assume that there is some data i have not got written some, all the data over here so common attribute in in between these two is venue id so what is our join operation actually we want to perform event uh, join venue so we will see it as an event semi semi join venue at site s1 so first step is that project the common attributes from r1 now what is our r1 r1 is nothing but here event so from event the common attribute is here venue id okay so we are just going to uh, see the find out the records for venue id as it is in project uh, operation duplicates are removed and we are going to get this record of venue id so this is our temp1 which will be stored at s1 now what is second step shift this temp1 from site s1 to site s2 for performing the next uh, next join operation with event uh, with venue so this will be transferred to site s2 so here 14789 is transferred that is temp1 has been transferred to s2 in the next step now the temp1 and the venue these are the two relations venue is already present at s2 we are going to perform the join operation and as we know how the join is performed this venue id is matched with all the venue id of venue and matching records are found so one with one since venue id is here primary key it is going to be have the unique record over there and that's why these five records are con contributing to this join of temp1 and venue so this has been stored into the relation temporary 2 now this temp2 which we have obtained at site s2 needs to be sent to again back to the site s1 so in the fourth step so in the third step obtain this temp2 which we have already obtained here and then this we have to transfer this temp2 from site s2 to s1 so here instead of sending the end, sending the entire relation venue we are sending only the tuples which are contributing to the join operation and that's why out of uh, yeah these many records that is a total nine records we are sending only five records to site s1 so ship this temp2 from site s2 to site s1 so once we have op got this record of temp2 so actual original table event and this temp2 join is going to be performed and the result is going to be obtained so this is the result of event join temp2 at site s1 so assume that if uh, i'm uh, the query was now event join venue at site s1 now if the query is venue join event at site s2 then the scenario will change as i told you first project venue id from event send back to the site s1 where the event relation is there then the uh, join of event and uh, venue is going to be performed get the result into temp2 and then send back again temp2 to temp2 to site s2 so where we are initiating that particular query accordingly the relation the table will change so coming back to our original uh, query that is account join depositor join branch which is issued at site sa so how it will be uh, calculated or how it will be performed using semi join strategy so first we are going to calculate or we are going to uh, find out the semi join of 
account and depositor at site SA and the result will be stored in temp1 at site A only. After that, the joint semi join of temp1 and branch will be issued at site A and then the result will be obtained. So, though it is uh, uh, involved multiple operations, join operations in a query, that will be again going to be solved using semi join. So, this is how semi join is saving the cost of transmission over there. So, I hope you have understood semi join strategy. Thank you.